Well, good morning, children, and welcome to Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School. Uh, let's begin our time together with a word of prayer. So let's make sure that we're sat nice and still. Let's have our hands together and our eyes closed. Almighty God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, that it is your day. And we thank you that you have brought us here to Sunday School. Lord, we pray that you would dwell amongst us. Lord, you have promised in your word that where two or three are gathered, that you will dwell in the midst also. Lord, we pray that you might help us. For we ask all these things in our Saviour's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we'll sing together now uh, our Sunday School prayer, which is Father in this place of worship. Well, let's remind ourselves now what we learnt in Sunday School last week. Uh, for those of you that were with us, um, if you remember, um, we continued in our series with the Apostle Paul. Um, now, he's been travelling around, hasn't he? Um, Paul has. Um, and he went to a certain place last week. Can anybody remember the name of that place? It's in Europe. That's right, it was Athens, Athens in Greece, wasn't it? And we learnt about the great big temple. Um, but upon Paul's arrival um, in Greece, uh, he was very sad, wasn't he? He was very sad at what he saw. What did he see? He saw lots and lots of, can you remember? That's right, he saw lots and lots of idols. He was very um, upset, I guess, at uh, the level of the idolatry that he saw in that city of Athens. Um, and if you remember in last week's lesson, um, we reminded ourselves, didn't we, about the Ten Commandments, um, where we learnt uh, that thou shalt have no graven images um, before the Lord. Um, and uh, do you remember that Paul preached um, a sermon, didn't he, uh, in last week's lesson, um, and he preached it um, uh, at a particular place. Um, so I'm going to ask you now, can you remember the name of that place? I'll give you two clues. Uh, the first is a planet and the second is another name uh, for a mountain. That's right, it was Mars Hill. And we learnt about Paul's sermon um, and our memory verse uh, came out uh, from um, Paul's sermon um, and he said uh, this. Uh, let's have a look at what comes up on the screen now. Uh, Paul preached this. He said, he hath appointed a day. That was God. God hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, whom he hath ordained. So let's say it together. He hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. And that was in Acts chapter 17 verse 31 um, we'll say it once more together because um, it is quite a long verse so we'll say it once more together he hath appointed a day 
in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Acts chapter 17 verse 31. So that was where we uh, left our lesson last week um, about uh, the Apostle Paul and we'll find out a little bit more uh, today about uh, his continued journey. Well, we're going to sing together now. Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord to me. And as we sing, I want you to pay particular attention to that second verse and look at these words in the second verse um, of this hymn. O oh, send thy spirit, Lord, now unto me, that he may touch my eyes and make me see. Show me the truth concealed within thy word and in thy book revealed. I see thee, Lord. Uh, we'll stand to sing, uh, Break Thou the Bread of Life. Well, it's time to turn to God's Word now. So uh, if you have your Bibles with you, um, could you turn with me, please, to um, the book of Acts? We continue in the book of Acts. Uh, so that's the fifth book in the New Testament. So you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, and this week we're going to be looking uh, in chapter 19, uh, and we're going to be looking at verses 23 to verses 28. Okay, so let us hear the word of God. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that, they be no gods, which are made with hands. So that not only this, our craft is in danger 
to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshippeth. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath, and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And may God bless to us that portion of his word. Let's come before our Heavenly Father now in prayer. So let's make sure that we're sat nice and still, that we've got our hands together and our eyes closed. Almighty God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that once again we can come to thee in prayer. We thank you, Lord, that thou art a God who loves us and who cares us so, for us so much uh, that you sent your only begotten Son into this world to die for our sins. O oh, Lord God, we do thank you that you have brought us here to Sunday School today. Lord, we pray that you would be with us wherever we are, Lord. Lord, we would pray that you would uh, keep us safe from harm. And Lord, as we prepare our hearts now for um, this lesson, Lord, we pray that you might um, give us concentrating minds, Lord, uh, and understanding hearts, Lord, so that we can see um, your purpose through your word. Lord, as we have sung, Lord, we pray that you might give us eyes to see and hearts to believe. Oh Lord, draw near to us now, Lord, we pray, for we ask all these things in our Saviour's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So just before we come to today's lesson, let's sing again together. Uh, and we're going to sing this one. Um, it's a new one uh, that we haven't sung, I don't believe, as a Sunday school. Um, and it's Great God with wonder and with praise, upon thy works we look, but still thy wisdom, power and grace shine brightest in thy book. It's lovely, isn't it? In verse 3, where it's talking about uh, the Bible. Here we are taught how Christ has died to save from death and hell. Not all the books on earth beside such heavenly wonders tell. Well, it's time now for today's lesson. So let's make sure that we're sat nice and still and ready to listen. Hello, children. 
It's lovely to be able to talk to you again. Last week in Sunday School, we heard about Paul in Athens. And today I want to tell you about what happened to Paul when he went to another city called Ephesus. But before that, I want to tell you a very quick little story. It was about a man who wanted to sell his car, his computer and a very tatty old football. And he made out the price labels for each one. But before he could sell them, somebody came along and muddled up all the labels and they were on the wrong item. So when he came to sell them, the car cost five pounds. The computer was for sale at £25,000 and the tatty old football was for sale for £900. And this is just a little illustration that we too can put the wrong value on things. We can get muddled up and the really important things in life we can think are very cheap and the things that are not that important we put a very high price on. And what I want to talk to you about today is about a group of people in Ephesus. Some of them discovered what was important in life and some didn't. God tells us what is important in life in the Bible. Well, Ephesus was a very busy city. It was a Greek city and it was situated in modern day Turkey. It was wealthy and it was also very famous for the worship of one particular goddess called Diana. Ephesus was ruled by the Romans and the Roman name for this particular goddess was Diana. The Greek name was Artemis. And they built a most beautiful temple for people to worship the goddess Diana in. And there were several businessmen there. There were silversmiths and they made a lot of money because they made small little silver statues of the goddess Diana. And just about everybody in Ephesus had bought one of these because they were frightened that if they didn't, then Diana would get very angry with them and would bring them bad luck and horrible things would happen to them. So most of the people bought these statues and the silversmiths got very rich. The priests in the temple also made a lot of money. What they did was they sold very expensive little books and scrolls of paper because most people in Ephesus believed in magic and these little books had magic spells written on them. They believed that these gods and goddesses were very similar to ordinary people. Of course, they don't really exist at all, but they believed that they were similar to ordinary human beings and they had moods and they could be grumpy and they could quarrel and squabble with each other. But that's quite different from the God that we read about in the Bible, our God. He never changes and he always loves us and he takes care of us. Well, Paul had, first of all, come to Ephesus a little while before, but he hadn't stayed long. 
there were a few Christians there, people who had trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive them for their sins, that he had died for them. And Paul met up with these Christians first of all. This time he decided he was going to stay for around about two years. He went first of all to the synagogue and started preaching to the Jews. He told them that it was useless trying to be good to get to heaven because we've all done bad things in our lives and we call these bad things sins. And if we were going to be punished for our sins, we would die. But God loves us so much that he sent his only son to come to this earth and he died for our sins. He was punished for our sins. He hadn't done anything wrong himself but we have. And he took the punishment for what we have done so that we can go free and he can forgive us for all that we've done wrong. Well, Paul then started to speak to other people. He hired, he rented a public hall and every day he went there and he preached and he spoke to anybody who wanted to listen, who wanted to hear him. And he told them about the Lord Jesus Christ and how anyone can be saved when they believe and trust in him. Well, many people believed and trusted Jesus in Ephesus and in the little villages nearby. They stopped believing in the lies about Diana and all the other gods and goddesses. And Paul did many miracles there. So the Christians were highly respected. They even made a huge bonfire and they burnt all their books of magic on the bonfire. And these were expensive. Probably in today's money, the value of these books would be around about half a million pounds. They were that expensive. But they were convinced that it was far more important to believe in the, Jesus, in the Lord Jesus Christ and to trust in him than any of the, any of the money spent on their books that their salvation was far more valuable than the books to them. Diana couldn't do anything for them, but the Lord Jesus Christ can. Well then, something awful happened. There was a silversmith called Demetrius, and he'd started to lose money because so many people were becoming Christians in Ephesus. They didn't want to buy silver statues anymore and he was losing a lot of money. He got angry about this. So he called a couple of his friends and he stirred them up and they got very angry too. And then they went around the city and they started stirring everybody else up. They got angry and started shouting and rioting. And they all rushed into the amphitheatre, which was huge. Thousands of people were able to sit there and they were all shouting, Great is Diana, God of the Ephesians. They grabbed two of Paul's good friends called Gaius and Aristarchus and they dragged them into the amphitheatre as well. So they must have been very, very frightened indeed. Paul wanted to go in and speak to the people and calm them down, but his friends wouldn't let him because they were frightened for his life. Well, this shouting went on for about two hours. It must have been awful for Gaius and Aristarchus. But then 
one of the officers of the city came along and he spoke to the people to calm them down. And he told them because Ephesus was under Roman rule, if they didn't calm down and stop rioting, then the Roman soldiers would have to come along and punish the people very severely. They were harsh. So the people stopped their riot and eventually dispersed. And Gaius and Aristarchus were set free. Well, shortly after this, Paul decided to travel on to Jerusalem and then to Rome. So what happened to the Christian church in Ephesus? Well, the church there continued to grow and flourish and get strong. In fact, John, one of the disciples of Jesus, was a pastor there for a while. And when Paul was in Rome, he wrote a letter to the Christians in Ephesus. And we can read that letter because it's in our Bible, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. The church was strong and flourishing. There were several people in Ephesus who had decided the most valuable thing in their lives was having their sins forgiven and knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and following him. Some others, like Demetrius, had decided to make worthless things the most important thing in their lives. What a mistake. So what about us? I hope that we will all decide to make Jesus the most important person in our lives. To trust him, to ask him to forgive us for our sins and to follow him for the rest of our lives. He has promised never to leave us, nor forsake us. And that was today's lesson at Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School. Uh, now it's time for this week's memory verse, uh, which will come up on the screen. Uh, and it's this one. Fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And that's in Acts chapter 19, verse 17. So that's fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Acts chapter 19, verse 17. So now it's time to uh, have a look at uh, this week's take home sheets, which are now available uh, to download. Uh, you can either click on the link um, within the description box uh, of this video, um, or you can go to the church website, which is www.tabernaclecardiff.org. And on the home page, um, there is a link directly to the Sunday school take home sheets. So today's lesson is lesson 22. So make sure that at the top of the take home sheets, uh, it says number 22 or lesson 22. Uh, and we'll have a look now at the um, infants take home sheet. You can see there riot at Ephesus and you can see there uh, the statue there of uh, Diana. Uh, and we'll also have a look now at the uh, juniors and the teenagers. Um, and there you can see our memory verse uh, on the left hand side. Fear fell on them all and the name of the Lord was magnified. Uh, so that's the uh, take home sheets um, for today. Um, so they are now available to download in one of those uh, two ways. Now it's time to have a look at your take home sheets from last week.
Well, as ever, it's lovely to see your colouring um, and your take home sheets uh, week by week. And I think every week they're certainly getting better and better. So please do keep those uh, coming into us for us to show them uh, the following week. We're now going to uh, sing our closing uh, song together, uh, which is this one. Uh, I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you, and these two words, follow me. So the words will come up on the screen and we'll sing together. I will make you fishers of men. Well, it's been lovely to have you with us uh, here today at Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School. And I do trust that uh, it's been a blessing to you also to be with us here in Sunday School. Well, here's just a quick uh, reminder as to what else is coming up um, today on this, the Lord's Day, uh, the Tabernacle Cardiff uh, YouTube channel. Uh, 9.30, that's us here uh, in Sunday School. Um, shortly at half past ten uh, will be the morning service. As I've been encouraging you for the last uh, few weeks or so, I really do um, uh, recommend you stay on and uh, watch that service, especially for uh, Pastor's Children's Talk, uh, which is at the beginning of the morning service. At 3.30 this afternoon, um, Alan Hyam uh, will be preaching uh, in Kapala Rath, which is the uh, Welsh service. And then this evening at six o'clock, um, our pastor will be preaching at the evening service. Now, all of these services are uh, available um, on the Tabernacle Cardiff uh, YouTube channel, um, which, of course, you are more than welcome to subscribe uh, to this channel and to share this channel with your friends and family. Well, it's time to come to the Lord in prayer now as we close Sunday school um, for today. So let's make sure that we're sat nice and still. We've got our hands together and our eyes closed. Almighty God and our loving Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you that once again, Lord, we can come to thee in prayer. And we thank thee for this time uh, today at Sunday School. Lord, we thank you for this hour of worship where we've been able to uh, learn about you, Lord. And we've been able to worship you, Lord. And Lord, we would ask and pray that you will continue with us. Lord, we pray that wherever we are, uh, that you would uh, draw near to us, Lord. Show us our sin. Show us our need of a saviour. And show us um, the Lord Jesus Christ. Loving Heavenly Father, we do uh, pray for this coming week. And we pray that uh, you will keep us safe and from harm. And that, Lord God, as uh, we uh, come together for Sunday school next Lord's Day, God willing, that uh, you would uh, bring us back here safely together. Lord, be with us now, we pray. 
For we ask all these things in our Saviour's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.